Hi everyone and welcome to another Foundation Roundup. I've got four brand new foundations to share my thoughts and opinions on in this video today. I have tested all of these foundations out within an inch of their lives, which I think is really important. I try not to do first impressions reviews when it comes to foundations because foundations can wear completely differently depending on what you team under them and what you put over them. So these have had considerable wear over several days. I have done wear tests on these. I've done application footage so you can see the whole process in full. If you're new here, hi, my name's Gemma. I have temperamental skin. So I have normal patches on my cheeks. I have dry patches underneath my eyes and around my mouth area. And I have an oily T-zone. It's not overly oily, but it is definitely oilier than the rest of my face. I'd love it if you consider clicking on the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell at some point during this video. Let's get on with it. I've got loads of notes in front of me, so please excuse me if I am looking down reading off my notes throughout portions of this video. We are going to kick it off with the brand new Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Enhancing Tint. I have had so many people contact me about this skin tint. The world has gone nuts. Honestly, will I be picking it up? Will I be trying it out? Will I be reviewing it? When is the review coming? Can you please make the review soon? Oh my goodness. Here is the review. So this is the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Enhancing Tint. It's £37 to buy in the UK and comes in 18 different shades. The bottle is white. It is once again egg-shaped and has a flat side so that you can lay this down, which really gets on my nerves and I'm getting on my high horse for absolutely no reason. This is perfectly doable. This is perfectly workable. It's a nice design, but I just wish I could stand it on its end because that's what I'm used to and I don't like change. I find it a challenge, what can I say? The consistency of the product is incredibly lightweight. This is a serum-like, very fluid consistency, which is going to give you light coverage and a luminous, healthy finish. This is a completely weightless formula. It's got blurring pigments in there to help smooth the appearance of pores and texture and even out the skin tone. And it's also crease-proof, so this can be used under the eyes if you choose to use it there. The beneficial ingredients in this formula we've got glycerin very high up on the ingredients list for hydration. You've also got prickly pear seed oil, which is anti-inflammation and a great hydrating ingredient as well. And sunflower seed oil, which is incredibly calming, hydrating and moisturizing. As well as those though, you've also got squalane, cocoa caprolate, which is a lovely emollient and vitamin E. This has no fragrance, no essential oils, no alcohol, and it's vegan and cruelty free. Now I thought I would be disappointed with the coverage of this. I don't usually gravitate towards a skin tint. I'm more of a medium coverage sort of girl. And I also thought that this wouldn't last long. I was completely wrong. This is stunning. I tried to put this on with my fingers. It's very easy to apply with fingertips, but I got a better coverage and a better finish when I applied it with the brush. It just seemed smoother and more even. This does dry down, but you do get a little bit of tackiness on the surface of the skin. That dissipates after a while, but not immediately. You can powder this in place, but you don't have to. I found it looked incredibly beautiful powdered in place. The powder didn't grab to any of the product. It didn't look cakier throughout the day because I'd applied powder. It just looked seamless for a really long time. So after eight hours of wear, this was still all intact, apart from the area on the bridge of my nose where my glasses do sit. So that is completely normal for me. I wasn't bothered about that. It obviously wasn't as airbrushed at the end of the day as it was at the beginning of the day, but it still looked like skin. And the blurring effect that happened right at the very beginning when I first applied lasted a good few hours before the shine reduced that considerably. It still looked beautiful though. It's not one of those skin tints that looks sweaty by the end of the day. At least it didn't on me. This is such a beautiful formula and I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I actually do. This is the one that I gravitate towards throughout the weekend when I'm wanting to look a little bit more awake, a little bit more vibrant, a little bit happier in my complexion, but I don't want full beat of makeup. It was so stunning. It's state of the art with the consistency, the texture, the wearability, and the fact that this blurs my pores, at least for a while until the shine comes through after a few hours, just blew me away. It's such 
a gorgeous, gorgeous formula. And um, the coverage is there. Light coverage for me, I didn't think would be enough, but it definitely is with this product. The one tip I will give you, however, is that be careful what you team underneath this, because I do have dry patches, like I said at the beginning of this video, around my mouth area. And depending on what I put on those in the morning depended how this wore. So because this is such a hydrating and nourishing formula, you don't need to go overboard with your skincare prior to application. So I found that if I applied my usual skincare, which is incredibly hydrating and nourishing, this didn't last as long throughout the day. If I applied something very lightweight prior to application, this lasted all day on me, no issues whatsoever. So that is a bit of a tip. This is hydrating and nourishing enough. If you have seriously dry skin and this wears off your skin really quickly, just bear that in mind for day two wear. Next up, we've got the Morphe Light Form Extended Hydration Foundation. This actually featured in my Spring Beauty Essentials video. This is such a lovely formulation, incredibly lightweight. Could I say weightless? I think I can in this instance. So this retails at £20 for 30 mils of product and comes in 36 different shades. I've gone for the shade 02N, which is a little bit fair for me, but I can make it work with a little bit of bronzer or with a little cream bronzer underneath this product. The bottle is really, really classy considering this is an affordable product. It's frosted glass with a plastic lid and it does come with a pump. I did find it a little bit difficult to get the first pump out. I had to really push down very hard on the pump to actually release the formula, but once the first pump had released, it's been smooth sailing ever since. The consistency of the Morphe Light form is slightly thicker than the Lisa Eldridge, so it is still very, very fluid, but it's slightly less serum-like, more like a loose foundation than a serum. This is going to give you medium buildable coverage with a skin-like natural finish. I do feel like the best way of application is with a brush for me. If I used a sponge, this was incredibly sheer coverage, so this can be sheared out if you want to, just use a sponge. You can also use your fingertips, but like I said, I got the most even coverage and smoothest coverage with a brush. This is gonna give you a really skin-like natural finish. It does look a little bit dewy right from the get-go, but that does dry down and a hint of that dewiness does fade. I don't like an overly dewy finish. This was enough for me. It was very flattering on my skin. Didn't sink into my fine lines, pores, any wrinkles. It was just beautiful. This is also a really long wearing formula, which actually surprised me because the consistency of the product and the way that it applies to the skin, I was expecting this to slide off my skin straight away and it definitely didn't do that. It's alcohol free, fragrance and essential oil free, and it's also cruelty free and vegan. This was really easy to apply, although this does lift when it's touched. So it's definitely not transfer resistant. I would recommend powdering this in place or using a setting spray if you are a face touch this may go a little bit patchy on you throughout the day, but it definitely wore very well on me. This lasts over eight hours, at least it did for me on every single time that I wore it. It gives nice even wear with no touch-ups whatsoever. So on each individual wear test day, I don't go in with powder, I don't go in with blotting paper, I let this run out as it would without touch-ups because I want each wear test to be as fair as physically possible. Just like the Lisa Eldridge skin tint, this didn't sink in or cling to any of my dry patches or sit in any fine lines. It did get shinier throughout the day, but it was a completely manageable shine. It didn't look overly sweaty. It didn't look like I'd had it on my skin for hours and hours and hours. It still looked quite fresh. It did oxidize a little bit though, but not very much. It may be an issue for some, it wasn't an issue for me. Moving on to the Louboutin 10 Fetiche Le Fluid Foundation. Check out the French on me. I probably got all that wrong, but I love this foundation. It is just superb on my skin. It costs 62 pounds to buy in the UK and you get 30 mils worth of product. This comes in 29 different shades. I've gone for the shade 10N. 
I don't think I would have gone for 10N had it not been for one of my beautiful subscribers telling me that they are my shade twin and that is what they got and it was perfect for them and it's definitely perfect for me also. It's really hard to choose your shade on the Louboutin website or on any other website because it has a photograph of all the shades on lots of different tones of arm and um, it looked really fair on the website and for that reason I'd have probably gone one up and it would have been completely wrong for me. So if you can get colour matched for this, if you are considering this, that would probably be your best option. Although if you are my shade twin, 10N is the shade that you want to go for because it's just perfection. It's divine, absolutely stunning. Gotta say, I'm a little bit underwhelmed by the packaging of this. When it came, had I not ordered direct through the Louboutin website, I'd have thought this was a fake because the glass bottle is beautiful, but this plastic cap just looks like something out of a cracker. Strike me down if you disagree. It's just my opinion, but I just think this looks cheap and tacky. And I did not think that that would happen with my first Louboutin purchase. The consistency is a medium consistency. It's not ultra loose, but it's also not ultra thick either. Very easy to dispense over the skin, to blend out, to buff out. It's just a lovely foundation to apply. It's going to give medium buildable coverage and give you a luminous matte finish, which I think is incredibly flattering on my skin. The skin still looks like skin. It's not going to matte to a flat mat. It's not a drying formula. It's a beautiful lightweight formula. You are going to feel it on the skin so it's not completely weightless but it definitely doesn't give you that thick foundation suffocating feeling either. This minimizes the appearance of my pores and smooths and evens my complexion. It's very, very comfortable to wear. Like I said, lightweight and breathable. It's also transfer resistant and one pump of the formula is enough for me to do my entire face. So I do sometimes dispense the tiniest bit more if I want to build up over the acne scarring on my cheeks or if I have any particular imperfections on my face that I want to cover over that day and just give it a little bit more of a boost. A tiny bit more is okay, but honestly, one pump is usually enough for me. So I wore this for 12 hours on one day and then forgot to do a wear test on it and check in with you all. Um, on the day that I did check in, I'd worn this for 10 hours, but I could have gone way longer. All of this is still intact on my face, apart from a tiny patch on the end of my chin. And that is not the fault of this foundation that would have ordinarily still been there. Only Ralph and I were playing throughout the day and he accidentally scratched me with one of his claws and uh, not only took some of the foundation off my chin, but also took some of the skin off my chin as well, which was great, but not his fault. It was totally mine. This was a little bit shinier than it was on first application, what foundation isn't throughout the day, but it didn't go cakey, it didn't look heavy in areas, it wore very evenly throughout the day, no settling in dryness, fine lines, it, it's just superb. I've worn this quite a lot in recent videos because I love it so much. <laughs> and finally, the brand new foundation from Sisley. This is the Phyto Tan Perfection and it is pretty much that. I mean, nothing is perfect, but this does come quite close. It's a lovely foundation, but it does come at a price. This is 80 pounds to buy in the UK. You do get the standard 30 mils. It comes in 29 different shades. I've got the shade 1N Ivory, which I've got to admit is slightly too deep for me. Just slightly, if you are my skin twin, I would perhaps go down a shade because although I can make this one work and I do have it on my skin today, I have I've had to bronze my neck up just to make things match. The packaging of this foundation is absolutely beautiful. You get a frosted glass bottle with a metal gold lid. Louboutin should learn something from this. It is elegant, it is classy, it is everything I love. And I think it's really quite important to get this aspect right when you're paying this much for a foundation. Because obviously the packaging doesn't matter massively, 
but you are paying for it, so it should be nice. The consistency of the Sisley formula is very similar to the Louboutin formula in the sense that it is quite a medium consistency which spreads really well. Do not be tempted to apply more than one pump to the skin. You get very little in one pump of the Sisley formula, and that is for good reason. This is incredibly pigmented, a little goes a long way. This is going to give you medium to full coverage with a luminous matte finish, which hydrates, smooths, illuminates and mattifies and I've never really found a foundation that does that a hundred percent both illumination and mattification is that even a word anyway I've just used it it mattifies as well so it's lightweight it's also transfer resistant it does say it's transfer proof I don't agree with that. I have done the tissue test and a little bit of this, depending on pressure, does come off on the tissue. So it's not 100% transfer proof, but I would definitely say it's transfer resistant. This for me though was incredibly long lasting and it's also got some lovely ingredients within the formula. So it's got soothing cucumber extract. It's got green lentil extract, which helps minimize pores over time. It's got buckwheat extract and also peach blossom extract to boost the skin's natural radiance and it's also got burdock extract to help purify and peony extract to really soothe the skin. Like I said earlier be careful how much of this you apply because a little does go a long way because of the amount that came out in one pump I thought on first application that I needed more product and actually I definitely didn't and when I went out in natural lighting this looked really heavy and that is not necessary whatsoever. You get a really decent coverage out of this with very little product and it looks skin-like. If you over apply this, this very quickly looks very heavy. After 10 hours however, all of this foundation was still intact on my face and it didn't look overly shiny. This is definitely one of those foundations that helps to keep my natural oils at bay throughout the day and I was massively impressed by that. This did not budge at all. And considering this foundation does have mattifying properties in there, it didn't feel drying, sit in my dryness or emphasize my dryness throughout the day. The shade that I chose didn't oxidize on me. It also didn't look heavy on my skin throughout the day. Once I'd mastered application and once I knew that one pump was definitely going to be enough for me. And after eight hours of wear on one of those days, Wes turned around to me and said that my skin looked really beautiful that day. And that is enough for me. The Sisley Foundation is alcohol free, but it does contain a fragrance. I once again, don't think that's overly dramatic. It actually smells like the signature YSL fragrance. It's got a little bit of cucumber in there. I actually find it quite pleasant. It's quite relaxing fragrance, but it definitely is there. So if you are sensitive to fragrance again, this is probably not going to be for you. So that's it, another foundation roundup done and dusted. I would love to hear your thoughts on any of the foundations that I've featured in this video today. If you've tried any of them out in the last couple of months, please share your experiences with the rest of the group in the comment section. Also, please don't forget to give this video a like, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Hope you've enjoyed it and hope to see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.